This video describes a new feature of the DOE wizard in Stack Graphics 19 that allows the construction of alias optimal designs. What I'll be describing in this video is a method for constructing an experimental design to do screening or optimization, where the design is selected in such a way that it's as optimal as possible for a specified model while at the same time protecting against confounding by effects that are not in the model. As a specific example, we're going to construct a screening experiment to find out which of six factors has the biggest effect on a response variable Y. We want to construct a 12-run design that will fit the main effects model y equals beta naught plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 and so forth. I'm going to start by constructing a d-optimal design. That's a design that seeks to maximize the information in the estimates of the coefficients in a particular model, in this case that main effects model. To do so, I'll go to DOE, Experimental Design Wizard. This brings up a window with a 12-step toolbar. In step one, I would typically define the response. I guess I'll call that Y. In step two, I define the experimental factor. Well, you know, I'll just take the defaults after increasing the number of factors to six. And the default is for each factor to be continuous ranging between minus 1 and plus 1. Normally I'd put in real units, but it simplifies it to keep it in standard units. The third step is to select the design. The design I want to select will be a computer generated design. That's a design where I can tell it, for example, that I want to maximize the D efficiency. We'll press OK and then go to step four where we specify the model that we want to fit. Now as I outlined before the model I want to fit is the main effects model that has six coefficients in addition to the constant term one for each of the effects. Step five is where I actually generate the design. There are a number of different criteria I can specify to optimize, I'm going to tell it to please optimize the D efficiency of the design. I'll tell it that I'd like to have 12 runs and then ask it to create the design. Well, you can see when it created the design that there are a total of 12 runs. All the runs are at either minus one the low level or plus one the high level. The design has a D efficiency of 100%. And that's as good as I can do with respect to D efficiency with 12 runs. When I press OK, it'll put that design in the data sheet. The design we've created is actually a very popular design. It's often called the Plackett Berman design. It's a de-optimal design for screening main effects if you're not worried about the presence of any other terms. Now to see some of the properties of this design, let me go back to the design wizard and push step six, which is evaluate the design. The first thing I'll look at is the correlation matrix. The correlation matrix will show me how correlated or uncorrelated the estimates of those six main effects are, the main effects of the six factors. You can see that it's a diagonal matrix here, meaning that the estimates of those effects will be orthogonal to each other. That's a very nice property. I'll also, though, want to look at the alias matrix. The alias matrix tells me of various effects not in the model, what is their relationship 
to the effects that I'm actually going to estimate. <clears throat> or in particular, if I take a effect, let's say effect A, you can see the aliasing with quadratic terms such as AA, interaction terms such as AB, AC, AD, and so forth. Well, it turns out that the main effect of A is confounded with quite a few interactions involving the other factors. And if you look down the table here, you can see all the things that are confounded with the main effect of A. What that means is if those interactions exist, even though they're not in my model, they will affect my estimate of the main effect of A. Okay? That means that I can potentially get confused. If there are a number of different interactions, interactions, let's say, involving BD and BE and uh, DE or whatever, they could look to me as if they were the main effect of A. When we construct an alias optimal design, which we'll do in just a moment, what we're going to do is trade off a little d efficiency for getting a better pattern in the alias matrix. When I ask the program in just a moment to construct an alias optimal design, it'll search for a design which maximizes the d efficiency while minimizing the trace of A transpose A, where A is the alias matrix we were just looking at. We do that by first specifying a potential model, a model with terms that we're worried about potentially having an effect that aren't currently in our model. And in line with what we're just talking about, I'll tell it to protect against two-factor interactions. I also need to tell it how small the D efficiency can be relative to the D optimal design. I'll tell it in just a moment not to reduce the D efficiency below 90% of the original D optimal design. It's also going to use a numerical procedure to try to find the alias optimal design and I need to specify the number of alias reduction attempts. Um, 10 will usually uh, get me to a pretty good design. To construct an alias optimal design, I'm going to go back to step 5, select runs. Instead of telling it, however, to optimize the D efficiency, I'm going to tell it to optimize the alias efficiency. Now before I have it create the design, I'm going to push the alias options button. I'm going to tell it what I'm concerned about is a potential model is a model with two-factor interactions. That I'd like the minimum relative D efficiency to be at least 90%. And usually 10 reduction attempts is enough. We'll make those settings and then press create. And you'll see it start to search for various improvements to the D-optimal design. It actually starts by searching for the D-optimal design and then tries to trade off the D-efficiency for a reduction in the trace of A transpose A. Okay. And now you can see that there was a reduction in the trace of A transpose A. I don't know if you noticed it on the previous screen, but it was up around 6.67. It's now been reduced to 0 0.59, which is quite a significant reduction. What it did, and this is pretty interesting, rather than running factor F always at its low level and its high level, it's now going to run it once halfway between the center and the high level, and once halfway between the center and the low level. Small changes like that can make a big difference in the amount of aliasing present in the design. 
At the same time, the D efficiency is above 90%. The D efficiency of this design is actually 90.45%. Let's go back and take a look at the alias matrix for the new design. In order to be consistent, I'll click the right mouse button, go to paint options, and tell it to ignore the curvature terms. After all, when I created the design, I asked it to protect only against two-factor interactions. The interesting thing now is that the presence, possible presence of two-factor interactions no longer has any effect on the estimates of the coefficients of factors A through F. The only effect of the two-factor interactions is now on the constant term, that term beta 0, which we normally interpret as the response in the center of the experimental region. It turns out, because some of the columns don't add to 1, that the presence of interactions can have a potential effect on that constant term. Overall, though, you can see the trace of A transpose A is only 0 0.59, which is a big reduction from the pure d-optimal design. I can also take a look at the correlation matrix of the coefficients in my model. You'll now see there are some correlations between the estimates of those coefficients. None of them exceed 0.33 in magnitude, so that's really not much of a problem. I can also, if I'm worried about that, those potential correlations, Go up to Evaluate Design and look at the model coefficients. In particular, if I look at the variance inflation factors of the model coefficients, I'll see that they've grown a little bit above 1, maybe up to about 1.2. That's a very small increase in the estimated variance of my coefficients and not something that I would normally worry about. We've gotten a real improvement, it turns out, in our 12-run design by allowing a little bit of a trade-off between the d-efficiency and the aliasing effects.